Hello, this is Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica, and today we are going to talk about what to replace in your program if your program is full of mountain climbers, because I don't know what the point of mountain climbers is, and they always suck. The mountain climber is one of these exercises that gets thrown into tons of programs because people try to use it as like a core training ab, which is a horrible exercise. It's always thrown into programs, but I can never tell why. In order for you to do really good mountain climbers, you already have to be incredibly strong. So doing a mountain climber the way that they're normally taught is very hard and most people cannot replicate it. So most people are not getting the benefit of the exercise when they do it because they just don't have the proper control to do it. We are going to replace the mountain climber with what we call an outside lunge. The outside lunge really does what the mountain climber is supposed to do, only better. So normally the point of a mountain climber is we're supposed to be in our perfect plank position and we're supposed to suck our legs up and go back and forth. In order to make the mountain climber really effective, what we would like is our back to always stay in the same position and we're essentially holding a top push-up position, a high plank position, and moving our legs back and forth in order to get cross-body stability on either side of our body. The problem is people tend to do all kinds of weird jumping exercises where they're coming in and out of load. Does that do something? Yes. Can we do it better? 100%. What we are gonna do is we are gonna start in our child's position because our child's position is gonna tell us where our hands and our feet should go. So we're gonna get back into our child's position and we're gonna sit back as far as we can. You should be able to sit back further than me. I've had three knee surgeries, so I can't get all the way down in this position. If you don't have knee surgery, then you should definitely be able to get all the way back in this position. Use our child's pose to set where our hands and our feet go. This is pretty good. This is where our hands and our feet start for all of these plank-based activities. From here, instead of just randomly bringing our legs up, we're gonna bring it to a defined end point. The goal of this is that we can keep our lower back in good position and keep our core on. As we do this transfer back, we're going through plank. Bring our leg up on the other side. The end goal position for this exercise is to have our toes equal with our fingertips and our heel flat on the ground with our foot pointed straight ahead. We get to this position, we go to the other side, we get to this side, change back. Bring your leg up, bring it back, bring your leg up, bring it back. We would like to eventually get our foot even further out in front. Toes in front of our fingertips is good. Toes equal is acceptable. Toes behind with our heel up, not what we're looking for. We're gonna to get to this position. I want you to sit down into the position. Make your back leg perfectly straight. If your back leg is bent, take a moment, drive the heel back, make it as straight as possible. Get it up. If you have to wiggle your way up, get it up. Straighten out your back leg, drive your heel back, flatten it all out, make it strong. So in this position, our goal is to keep our plank constant the entire time, which should be the goal of the mountain climber, but that's not often how it's coached. Oftentimes it's just move your feet back and forth for X period of time. And that means people tend to be doing this thing kind of not super correct. We would like to be able to do it more better. In order to do that, we're just changing our end goal. Instead of just moving our feet, our goal is to get our foot to position as far as a, as far up as it needs to go and then replicate that. In order to do that, you're gonna to have to either get more movement in your hips or more movement in your spine and in your core. I don't care which one you do as long as you get to the end position. If in the beginning you have to lift your hips up to get there, then settle back down into the position. Once you're in the position, try to hold it as you get back. If you come up and you gotta to adjust to get there, adjust, drag your foot around if you have to, and get it back. The reason we picked this outside lunge is because this outside lunge is part of a bunch of different types of get-ups. Getting up off the ground is super important, and as people age, they lose the ability to get up. People who've never done athletic training, which is kind of a lot of people in the world right now, don't have a good ability to get up off the ground, and that is a huge hole in athletic development that is very easily solved. So later on, we wanna use this position 
as a transfer to actually get up. Getting back, setting this foot. The point of this foot is that it's a strong base of support for us to get up and down in more complex movements later on. So let's take that mountain climber, which doesn't have a lot of complexity added into it. It's kind of just a mountain climber. And let's make it step one of much more complex and advanced, very human movements, getting up off the ground with purpose and athletic drive.